So yesterday I got a haircut and, but I, I take my haircuts here at home, thanks to my mom. Um, so then I thought to myself, let me watch the Barbershop Trilogy. Historically, when I used to go to barbershop, it was mostly, it, it, when I was a kid, it was mostly Fridays, most of the time weekends. But then in the last few, in before COVID, just um, any day of the week, mostly in the mornings because I was trying to avoid the barbershop being packed. So I was like, you know what? I got a haircut yesterday. Free haircut, by the way. Let me watch the Barbershop Trilogy and make a movie review about it and put this out Saturday morning. So today is Thursday, but I'll be putting out Saturday morning. Barbershop one. I remember when this movie came out back in 2002. The song that is part of the soundtrack that will always catch my attention is Trade It All, Trade It All Part 2. Right from the beginning of the movie, it set the tone. So in Barbershop 1, Calvin, played by Ice Cube, um, he struggles with the barbershop that he inherited from his father who passed away. He left the barbershop to him and he ended up selling the barbershop to a loan shark named Lester Wallace, played by Keith David. Keith David, to me, is one of the most underrated actors I've seen. He's a guy that deserved to get his flowers. Phenomenal actor. He's been in the game for so many years. And this was the first movie that I saw him in. Um, ever since then, I've been following his work, and I just love him. I just like him as an actor. Excuse me, I said love, but it's like... Um, <laughs> um, he plays a very good villain in this movie. Um, after Calvin sold the barbershop to him, he starts regretting it. He realizes that the barbershop is a very big deal, not just to him, but to everyone that came to the barbershop. People love the barbershop. He met his wife there. His wife's father used to go to the barbershop all the time. He realized that he's gonna leave a huge legacy behind and he's tarnishing it. Eddie, played by Cedric the Entertainer, he plays as the old man. He, to me, he's the heart and soul of the Barbershop trilogy. He's been the longest at the Barbershop out of everyone that's working there. Without Eddie, the movie would not be as half entertaining without him. To me, he's the heart and soul of the Barbershop film series. Michael Ely plays as Ricky. Ricky's a two-time felon. He has issues with Detective Williams. He has issues with his own cousin. His own cousin screwed him in Act 3 of the movie, if you've seen it. But um, everything I mean, Eve, Eve was one of the best female rappers at the time. She plays the role as Terry. She deals with her boyfriend and dealing with the infidelity of her boyfriend cheating on her. She's very aggravated throughout the movie because of her personal issues. She ends up, leave, she ends up leaving him. And it's funny because that same boyfriend, they go on to play boyfriend and girlfriend in the series called Eve. Sean Patrick Thomas as Jimmy. 
I didn't like him in the first barbershop movie because he, he's one of those guys that just because he has a great education, he thinks he's better than everyone, that knows more than everyone. And I have met people like that and those kind of people I stay away from. So ever since, even back then when I was watching the movie, I disliked his character, but then towards the end, he humbled himself and he changed his way of thinking in some ways. As towards the end of the movie, you see that Calvin uses the money that Lester Wallace gave him to bail out Ricky out of jail. And he ended up getting his shot back. So towards the end of the movie, you see that he changed the barbershop's name to Calvin's Barbershop. And everything came into full circle. He has a new baby boy now. And that was the perfect segue to Barbershop 2. Now, um, oh yes, Anthony Anderson is in this movie. Lawrence Tate's older brother is in this movie as well. They have um, good scenes together. They stole um, the ATM, but little do they know that there's no money in the ATM. Um, Anthony Anderson is one of those actors who has come a long way, so um, I'm happy with where he is today. So my review for Barbershop 1, out of five stars, I give it a 3.3 out of five. Barbershop 2, Back in Business. I remember going to the movie theaters to see this movie with my sisters, and I forgot who else, but it was a group of us that we went to the AMC in Times Square to see this movie. In this movie, you have new additions to the cast like Queen Latifah as Gina, Kenan Thompson as Kennard. Um, I love them in this movie, by the way. And wait, no, there's more. Robert Wisdom as Alderman Brown. Very good actor, underrated as well. Another actor that's underrated and he's in this movie, Harry Lennox as Quentin. So this move, this part two is about the barbershop. Got new competition on the block. And that new competition on the block is the barbershop called Nappy Cuts, which is owned by um, Quentin, played by Harry Lennox. And they're at crossroads. They're at crossroads. So that was the main plot of the movie. Isaac Rosenberg, played by um, Troy Garrity, who's in the first movie as well. He went from this barbershop that no one wanted to take a haircut with because he was a rookie, I believe. And he went from being that guy that no one wanted to get a haircut with to the superstar barber of this movie. And he was so good as a barber that he became way too overconfident, way too overconfident to the point where he started rubbing off his, co co his co-workers the wrong way, especially Ricky. Ricky and him, buddy heads throughout the movie. Um, so yeah, he was way, way overconfident. And, and, and it got, it got very bad, especially when uh, Mr. Brown came to the barbershop. Ricky, um, is dealing with women problems. And at some point, him and Terry got into an argument. There was a lot of tension between them throughout the movie, but then when they finally got into an argument, they ended up making out, which Isaac caught them. And he exposed them when Isaac and Ricky were arguing. Isaac ended up leaving the barbershop because he felt like he was unappreciative um, and, uh, 
And yeah, that was a very big deal. Um, Jimmy, um, the smart guy, the Mr. Know-it-all, he's into politics. He's involved in politics in this part too. And seeing what he was seeing and how politics work and how the community, the community was being treated, towards the end of the movie, he decides to leave politics and come back to work for the barbershop. So that was a very bold move from him, but his heart was in the right place. By the way, him and, and Terry's, their exchanges are always priceless. So he had a way of getting um, under, uh, he had a way of getting under the skin of Terry. I guess because Terry was just an easy target. She doesn't like to be disrespected. That's why she snaps quickly. Um, like I said, Keenan Thompson, he's funny as in this movie. In the small parts that he has in this movie, um, he makes the best of it. I like when when the group goes sneak into an Appy Cuts and Keenan <laughs> Keenan Thompson, uh, who played the character as Kennard, he tells Jimmy, like, let's play ball one on one. And I forgot what he called them, but then Jimmy responded by saying, he, he was laughing and he was like, you're starting to get on my nerves. And Kennard was like, ho, 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 ho. you're starting to get on my nerves. Is the way he imitated him was hilarious. So, but yeah, I am very happy with Keenan, with Keenan Thompson and how far he has come. Very happy for him. Um, but he ended up, um, in a way, being a sellout because he went from going to Calvin to work at Nappy Cuts. But then again, um, no one really wanted him at Calvin's Barbershop because he was too goofy, too this, too that. So, um... But yeah, um, my f one of my favorite scenes of this movie, even though this is my least favorite movie out of the three, one of my favorite scenes in this movie is the exchange between Eddie, played by Cedric, and Gina, played by Queen Latifah. Them roasting each other at the barbecue, that's one of my favorite scenes of the movie. And you also had an unknown Kiki Palmer in the movie. Um, but yeah. Uh, my review for Barbershop 2, Back in Business, from 1 through 5, I'll give it a 2.7 out of 5 stars. Last but not least, Barbershop, The Next Cut. This is the third movie out of the trilogy. My favorite one and the best one. Very heartwarming, touching, and like I said, this is the best one out of three. I feel that Ice Cube's acting is way better in this one than the previous two. He took it up a notch. Um, this one is even well directed out of the three. Of course, Malcolm D. Lee, Spike Lee's cousin, um, directing just runs in that family. Um, very talented director who doesn't get um, enough recognition. Um, you have new addition in this new additions in this movie, such as Regina Hall, who plays Angie, Nicki Minaj as Drea, Dion Cole as customer Dante, Common is in this movie as well. The list goes on and on. So in this movie, you have Calvin's Barbershop and Angie's Beauty Shop merge into one business. All right. And you see Calvin's son, who's a young teenager now. He's rebellious, nagging attitude, constantly, um, you know, constantly giving attitude to his parents, um, hanging out with the wrong crowd, and he even plans to join a gang. Calvin and his wife especially Calvin, they're trying to protect their son from becoming another statistic. 
they're trying to keep them away from um, bad activity. They don't want to bur they don't want to have to bury their son or get a call saying that their son has been murdered. These are this is the south side of Chicago. Um, the streets is tough, a lot of gang activity, so they're very concerned and worried for their son. I um, Calvin developed this plan called Ceasefire in trying to bring the community together, um, rival gangs together to bring peace to the community, to the neighborhood. Um, Common's son and Ice Cube's son, you know, they're, they're close friends. And when Calvin starts realizing that in Calvin's eyes, he feels that Common's son is a bad influence for him. So when Calvin approaches Common about, you know, telling him like, your son needs to stay away from my son, they start having some friction problems in the movie. And what's so funny about that is that in real life, both men being hip hop rappers, at one point in the 90s, Ice Cube, who, who was part of West Side Connection, had a feud with Common. So the fact, is, so when I think about that, those scenes, that they had tension, I think about West Side Connection versus Common. But uh, yeah. Um, the saddest moment for this of this movie, and it cut me deeply, is after they were dancing in the barbershop. I'm gonna try not to get emotional when it comes to this part. A local um, police officer comes in. The minute um, Calvin saw his facial expression, he knew that something was wrong. So after they turned down the music, they t or they shut off the music, the officer tells everyone at the barbershop that Anthony, a kid named Anthony, who was working at the barbershop, got caught, in, got caught up in a shooting and was killed. It was not intentionally for him to get killed, but he was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. That devastated everyone at the barbershop. Well acted, by the way, especially Nicki Minaj. But this infuriated Calvin. Anthony was one of the good ones. And Calvin, who's a father, having a teenage son, it really burned a huge fire inside of him. This infuriated him so much that he decided to throw in the towel. He's like, screw the ceasefire. Let these kids kill each other. This plan is not gonna work. And he basically just was like, screw it. Like, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why do I have to continue working at the barbershop? Like, I'm a father first. So, and then Angie just went off, saying, no one asked you to be a father, etc. If any, Like, if anything, like, you should have talked to me because Calvin was making moves and not talk to Angie about it because, hello, both of them are in business together. Both of their businesses merged into one. So Calvin was planning on basically ditching them because he was doing everything he can to protect his family, because, you know, his son. So he's like, screw it. I'm leaving all of this. It's not worth it. I'm not getting, I'm not going to have my son getting killed by these streets. This whole idea is worthless. Because of the news that happened to Anthony, that just tore them apart, especially him. But then Q, um, Calvin, <laughs> later on, comes back to a barbershop and basically buries the hatchet with everyone there and told them, like, you know, like, let's give it a try and, you know, go forward with the whole plan. 
and um, he ended up making the right decision and thankfully um and all glory to god um calvin's son decides not to join the gang decides not to go through those um those terrible things that he was gonna do but one of the things that helped out was that his friend which is common son told him like yo it's not worth it the reason calvin son was going with the whole let's join a gang whatever because his friend um was gonna do it but given that he he set him straight um he ended up saving his own life and changed his attitude. He came later to a barber shop, right when it was basically when it was closed, and he told Calvin his father like that he wants to get a haircut. He cut off his hair, and he just transformed himself into being more obedient and be a good kid, be a good teenager. So those moments in Act 3 was very well executed, very well acted. Good um, writing scenes, especially in Act 3. And um, I just liked it. You also had a special guest of um, Anthony Davis, whom at the time was playing for the Pelicans. Now he's with the Lakers. So, but yeah, this this um, part three was my favorite one out of all three, out of all three. So my review from one through five, I give this a 4.3 out of five stars. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed um, this video discussing all three barbershop movies. I have never done anything like this to talk, give my movie review on a trilogy of more than, I think I did two at one point, but I never did three. So, I mean, I've put out so much content here on the MMM Journal, so, but um, I'm glad that I did it. Um, like I said, this will be premiere on Saturday morning, paying homage to the, um, the old days when I used to go to the barber shop on Saturday mornings, early afternoon um, with my dad um, sometimes with my mom, most of the time by myself. So, but um, those days are behind me because now getting a haircut is like $30, $35. So the last time I went to a barbershop was during the pandemic, which is in, in 2020. And when my barber told me that now it went from 30 to 35, I was like, nope, can't do this no more. So I went from getting a haircut, free haircuts with my dad, so now getting free haircuts with my mom and um someday i'm gonna get my own i'm gonna take myself a haircut um i shave you know stuff like that but um it's gonna happen one day you know free free i don't have to go to a barber shop and deal with loud music loud talking and all that stuff which you see in a barber shop but um i had my good moments my good years going to a barbershop but you know but too much money wasting too much money for every two weeks because i would get a haircut every two weeks um so yeah um please hit that thumbs up don't forget to hit that subscribe button and as always guys be safe and may god bless you all take care everyone